Hello, I'm Camilla and this is my channel Hasty Books. Welcome back if you're subscribed or seen my content before or welcome if you've not been here before if this is your first time. You've come at the right time because I'm very very excited to be bringing you this video today. In this video I'll be combining my love of TV and film with my love of books. I love sitcoms. I think that they are a short and accessible way to kind of consume entertainment, you know, and it makes you laugh and it's just sort of good humor and I just, I like that. Suffering from anxiety, I found myself kind of falling back on sitcoms a lot, especially like after a difficult day or to kind of calm my mind, you know, before going to bed or something. This has been especially true for the last two years and I've consumed so many sitcoms over that time. One of the only silver lining of this whole period, I always say, is that I got my husband to watch loads of the sitcoms that I absolutely adore. There are so many sitcoms that I love and that I recommend and that includes shows like Superstore, Schitt's Creek and Dairy Girl among many others. At first I was going to do like a recommendation per show, like if you like this show, read this book. But then I decided to just go a bit deeper into this journey. And then came the idea to recommend books based on personalities and characters from specific shows. And I'm starting today with the characters of one of my favorite sitcoms, Parks and Recreations. <laughs> to do recommendation of book non-fiction or fiction for each of the main characters of like the parks team and there's a couple extra bonus characters I've included at the end as well. Because sitcoms can be very caricatural I didn't really want to fall into caricatural or stereotypical or joke recommendation so I'm recommending like you know real books and I'm going to be using this word a lot vibe so I think it's the Books are giving me like the vibe that I think the, the characters would like that or that if you like this character, you may want to try this book because <laughs> that's maybe your style. I also won't be talking uh, at length about the book or explaining what they are. So these will be a list of recommendations for each character. And let's dive straight in with obviously the main character, the amazing Leslie Nope. Leslie is a character that I absolutely love. She's a woman after my own heart. She is so passionate and committed and wants to do good and just wants to keep going. We just love her passion, right? The two books I'm going to recommend are books that I 100% believe that Leslie would have read the minute they came out because she's so keen. These books are nonfiction about powerful and influential women in the US and I think that Leslie would have 100% her seal of approval on them. The first is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I just knew that I had to recommend this one. It was one of my own, my favorite reads a couple years ago and I think it's a great way to dive into nonfiction and also about a little bit of like political life and making a difference in the world and I think that that at the heart is what Leslie wants. The second book is My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I just think that Leslie would be the kind of person to want to read, you know, autobiographies or biographies or memoirs by influential women. And I think that's a big one. Next, I had to go with the head of the Parks Department himself, uh, at the beginning anyway, Mr. Ron Swanson. And I didn't want to fall into caricatural recommendation, as I said, so I'm not going to recommend a book about bacon. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. But I had the vibe of like craftsmanship and wood because he loves to make things with his hand and just he's a very like kind of self-reliant person. And I kind of came this whole book about you know how to chop with like a Norwegian and all this stuff but I was like he's not really keen on Europe is he? What does he like about Europe? He likes Scotland, he likes whiskey and I'm you know living in Scotland I thought I can give him some good recommendation. So I have to go with a classic, which is Whiskey Galore by Compton McKenzie. This is a real story. It's people actually stealing from the government. It's whiskey. I think he would love it all. The second one I would maybe recommend is The Mash House by Alan Gillespie. This is a more modern take on that whiskey kind of based Scottish Highland novel. It's kind of a noir mystery novel um, that came out yeah, quite recently, like a couple years ago. So yeah, I think those are the two that I would recommend for Ron. Next, let's follow this up with Ben Wyatt, Leslie's husband and a huge fan of Calzone. <laughs> 
For Ben, I thought he's really into his board game and like the lore and he was clearly a huge fan of Game of Thrones. Remember when Leslie got him the throne? When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. But I think Ben is also a big feminist. He is such an advocate and therefore I thought he would want people and he would like to try to read more fantasy by a woman which is one of the genres where um, I think people can extend their reading a little bit. So I'm going to go with a classic yet again and recommend Ursula Le Guin. So the Earthsea series, I think that Ben would love that. And really, I think Ben would have already read that. But it's a good one to try if you really enjoy Ben's kind of nerdy enthusiasm and keenness for um, a fantasy lore. Next up is April Ludgay, one of my favorite characters. Um, she is such a great personality and um, as Donna says at some point, you know, she has a hard exterior but she is a complete softy on the inside. I'm recommending a book that I've not actually read but the vibe of it really gave me April Ludgate and it is Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. Let's not forget that she actually tried to go and get a job in a funeral home at some point with Ben and you know unfortunately she didn't think it was quite for her but I feel like she would enjoy this vibe you know. Next also is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I think that she would enjoy the genre, she would enjoy the mystery and the creepiness and she likes a creepy house so why not? Let's move to the next character which is April's husband Andy Dwyer and Andy, <laughs> I struggled a little bit with making a recommendation here because I think his character has been tainted a little bit for me because of Chris Pratt but at his heart I think he's a huge softy as well and very very you know um keen to support his wife and everything. However, I think that if he's reading, if, <laughs> I think he would love reading stuff with FBI agent and CIA and intrigue and all of that because we know that he loves that stuff. So I'm recommending the Jack Ryan series by Tom Clancy. It's not something that I've read. It's not really my type, um, but I've enjoyed the first season, you know, uh, with, um, well, another sitcom favorite, Jim <laughs> from The Office. <laughs> Um, in a complete, you know, change of job. So yeah, I think that, that would be kind of his style and what he would like to read about. Next, we're going with Anne Perkins, the poetic novel land mermaid that she is. She's one of like the more down-to-earth characters of the series and I think for that reason there's something kind of more classic about her vibe and also quite romantic. And so for that reason, I decided to go for a classic romance. And I mean, she's called Anne, so I had to recommend Persuasion by Jane Austen. And let's not forget that she rekindles her love with Chris by the end of the series, just like Anne does with Frederick Wentworth. The parallels are all there. I'd probably also recommend some kind of modern romance as well, like Beto Leary, maybe even Emily Henry, or maybe even Love in Color by Bolu Babalola, which follows kind of mythic tales from around the world. Next, let's move on to. Chris Drager. <laughs> For him, I think that he's a very efficient and goal-oriented person. So I think he would read nonfiction, and I hope I didn't fall into a um, stereotype here, but I think he would really enjoy books about running. So I'm recommending What I Talk About When I Talk About Running by Haruki Murakami. It's a great one that kind of delves into job, like writing, creating, as well as running, as well as effort and commitment. Um, which I think that Chris would enjoy. And I also found a book that's coming out actually in this year in 2022, which is called Becoming a Sustainable Runner by Tina Muir and Zoe Rom. And I feel like he would want to be at the forefront of, you know, being a sustainable runner and becoming better for the planet and for himself. So I think that's all Chris. Next we have Jerry Gary Terry Gergich. We love him. He's our favorite little worker at this office. For him, because he loves a like, little 9 to 5 job, he has a great family, I feel like he has just this kind of cozy life of, you know, a suburban office worker and yeah, I just, it feels very complete and cozy, right? So for that reason, I decided to go into a cozy mystery. And so I'm recommending The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I feel like he would like to add this little mystery to his life, a little excitement, but you know, Still with like the 
homely theme and just like normal kind of people involved in these stories. Next, let's do Tom Haverford. And Tom, ah, oh, I struggled to find a book for Tom because I think he's so on top of things. He's really into treating himself. And I think there's really a lot of excitement about making more for himself and just pushing for that dream. So I hope that I'm not falling again into caricature, but I'm really recommending the Crazy Rich Asian trilogy for Tom and for fans of Tom. It has the vibe of, it has the money, it has the luxury, and also the kind of building up of opportunities. And it's really a series that I adored. So I'm not recommending it because, <laughs> you know, Hassan Zari is Asian and um, wants to be rich. But I feel like the vibes are stuff that he would really enjoy. And yeah, it's a really, really good series. I think it pushes past the first book, Crazy Rich Asian, and falls into a uh, China rich girlfriend and then rich people problems. And it becomes almost like a saga. And yeah, I really think that it's a great one to kind of delve into that world. Next, we have Donna Meagle. And she has a very similar vibe as Tom, you know, where they're all in together for the treat yourself. What do we treat ourselves to? Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. It's the best day of the year. The best day of the year! Love that friendship and how much like they're there for each other, even if it's just to go shopping at, you know, in Beverly Hills. Uh, for that reason, I feel like she'd really enjoy the kind of world that Taylor Jenkins Reads has created in terms of like talking about rich people and famous people and yeah, this whole uh, idea. But I also feel like she's also has this dark sense of humor and I really do enjoy that. Actually, I think she's one of these under um, stated characters really. And so I'm recommending My Sister the Serial Killer by Irene Khan Brightwave. I think this is a really, I think I saw it once referred to as the darkly comic, something like that, um, novel about a sister who always helps, um, well, her, uh, her sister uh, clean up when she kills men. And I think there's just that kind of vibe that Donna would totally do that for her sisters, you know? Finally, we add the bonus characters and we don't get a lot of flesh out of these characters, but they are in a quite a few episodes and I quite like them. So I thought that I would include them. The first is Diane Lewis played by Lucy Lawless and who becomes Ron Swanson's wife. And I, I just I really like her character, you know, she really stands on her own and everything. For her, I decided to recommend Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I feel like there's that vibe uh, when she comes in and there's like the shadow of all the Tammies, but she also, yeah, stands her own ground. Just love that vibe for her. Next, we have Craig Middlebrooks, played by Billy Eichner. My name is Craig Middlebrooks and this is my Deborah Rewards card. Amazing character. I absolutely love it every time he's on the screen. He's an intense man and he cares as intensely as he sometimes hates. <laughs> For him, I would recommend, I think I would recommend Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me by Mindy Kaling. I feel like that would be 100% his vibe. In terms of fiction, I feel like he would really enjoy the kind of humor and vibe of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And obviously, again, I don't want to fall into the stereotype, but he's the one, is he the only one? He's maybe the only queer character on this show. Um, but uh, if you kind of are looking for that, um, one that I read last year that I really enjoyed was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And I think that Craig would like that, even though I think it potentially he would also hate it <laughs> for its political stuff, but I think he'd be really into it. Next, we have Jennifer Barkley played by the absolutely amazing Katrin Hahn. We don't get a lot of her, but what we get is so funny and I absolutely heard, adore her. I feel like Jen doesn't really read that much. I feel like she's too busy for that. But if she did, I feel like she'd be the kind of Donna Tart reader. Or maybe like she would just read one book in 10 years and that would be Donna Tart's book, which come out every 10 years. So, you know, Secret History, Goldfinch, you know, I think that would be her vibe. If you really like her character, I'd probably also recommend um, some nonfiction like The Year of Yes, Special on the Rhymes, or even Lean In. I feel that's really very much the vibe of uh, Jennifer Barkley and also maybe Quiet by Susan Cain. I feel like that would maybe <laughs> chill her out a little bit, you know. Finally, we are the last two characters and I could not make this video about Parks and Rex without including them and that's Mona Lisa and John Raffio. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. 
okay, fine. Um, they were the two hardest ones for me to pick though, uh, because they are so wild. So for Mona Lisa, I decided to go for My Ear Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mushfeg. I feel like she has the vibe, uh, obviously the comedic vibe, but still the vibe of both characters that are in that story, which are a little bit at like opposite ends of a scale, but also I like a little bit complimentary. So I feel like she has that vibe. For John Raphael, I, oh, I struggled actually, I really struggled. I feel like he has the energy of Gone Girl. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but also I feel like he'd maybe enjoy Good Omens by uh, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. So I feel like those are some potentially good recommendation. All right, so this was my list of recommendation based on Parks and Recreation characters. Kind of uh, coming back a little bit to the John Raffio thing, like if you have a book that you think is a better fit for uh, any of these characters, please let me know in the comments below. And also, I guess, sharing with other people watching and reading this, um, this video. Uh, because I would love to know if you're a fan of the show, if you think some, yeah, you have other books that, you know, maybe I don't know about, like it'd be great to hear your thoughts. And also, I would love to know if you enjoyed this content. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of video because I would love to make a series out of it or, you know, leave a thumbs up. I want to keep going. My next potentially would be Superstore, which I absolutely adore and I'm currently rewatching. <laughs> so yeah, I want to make more of these content and it's great to be kind of marrying two of my interests in kind of film and media, but also uh, with books. So yes, as always, thank you so much for watching and for supporting me and hey, see you back. Bye.